Hello guys, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CPP Nerd's video series on multi-threading in C++ series and this video is about trilog in C++ 11 threading. So this trilog is different than mutex trilog because just before this video we learned about trilog which was in mutex class. So that trilog was the member function of mutex. So that trilog you was using like this m dot try lock excuse me for my writing okay so this m is a member of sorry object of mutex okay so you was using try lock like this but this try lock is totally different than this try lock let me just erase this so let's see what this try lock is this is nothing but a standard oh, sorry global function which takes number of mutexes and it will try to lock all of them let's read this out std try lock tries to lock all the lockable objects is exactly this does not take only mutex it takes shared lock and other lockable objects also but for sake of this video i will use only mutexes so that we can understand this easily so try lock tries to lock all the lockable objects passed in it one by one in given order so if you remember if we ever try to lock some mutex which is like this m dot try lock then you was locking sorry trying to lock only one object but in this case you can lock simultaneously so many objects at this line itself so let's suppose there is some critical section before this you want to lock let's say five mutexes this is mutex one this is two three four and five so you have to write m dot try lock try lock try lock and try lock so don't you see there is a very big code which is not needed so you can combine that into one line saying that try lock m1 comma m2 comma m3 and so and so forth and it will go till n because that n is not defined so you can take as many mutexes as you want and notice this this will try to lock it is very important to notice that it will try it won't lock it will try to lock try lock means if it is not able to lock it won't wait there it will come back and you will go ahead further if it is only lock means if you are not able to lock it you will wait but here it is try lock so you will not wait okay so this second point is on success this function returns minus one this is also very important otherwise it returns zero based mutex index number which it could not lock so here as i said i will be using mutexes it can be shared lock or deferred lock and other locks so what second point is saying if it happened to lock all the mutexes then in that case it will return minus one then you will get to know that okay all the mutexes were locked successfully if not it will return zero base index mutex number it means let's suppose m3 was not able to lock i mean this try lock could not lock m3 then it will return two because this is zero base index so this is zero this is one and two then you will get to know that this second number means this m3 is failing in locking i mean you're you're not allowed to lock this m3 at this moment then you will take some respective action or you won't take any action you will do whatever is given to you without locking any of them okay we'll see all those parts don't worry about that so for now you just understand that if m3 was failed it will return 2 if everything was passed it will return minus 1 okay and we have to check the return value of this try lock in if condition and you will get to know that okay everything was passed or failed so this third point is if it fails to lock any of the mutex then it will release all the mutexes it locked before yes this is also a very important point let's suppose as i said this m3 was failed what about this m1 and m2 locked situation because it was able to lock m1 it was able to lock m2 then it happened to be like it was not able to lock this m3 but m1 and m2 was locked right so it will release m1 and m2 and then return 2 so this is 
also a very important point. And fourth is, if a call to try log results in an exception, unlock is called for any logged object before rethrowing. So enough talk, let's see the example for this. So the example for this could be, you have two threads, this is T2, this is T1, and this thread is producing some data which is stored inside X, and this is producing some data which is in stored inside Y. So thread one, thread two produced data are in X and Y. There is another thread, T3, and this thread is trying to consume whatever is produced here. So this will try to access X from here and Y from here, okay? And after consuming, it will set to zero means it will free all the things it was generated in t1 and t2 this example can be assumed like there is one bucket don't bother about the size the bucket name is x and this thread has bucket y and they both are getting filled okay and there is this thread t1 which has the bigger bucket which will try to pour whatever is there inside this and this into this and as you have poured this one and this one here, you are actually empty, correct? So I have tried to simulate this kind of behavior in programming, so let's see the program now. And don't worry, if you don't understand this program, I will be giving this program in one of my blog. Yeah, I have started giving my programs in blog so that you can copy paste and do some experiments on them because I have realized that so many people are asking my programs because it is really, really hard to type these things to actually do some experiment and I can understand that. So I have decided I'll be writing a small blog and I'll copy paste this full code so that you can get that there. And I'm going to start that thing from this video. So don't complain if you're not getting code for some other video. Okay. <laughs> so as I said, you will need three thread. So we have T1, T2 and T3. So T1 and T2 are producing something in X and Y and this consume will actually consume X and Y. So this is another thread. So let's look at the code here. This code is very simple. This is increment X and Y. So I have only one function which will act as a T1 and T2 both. Because if you see here in main, I have created T1 and T2, but increment X, Y function is similar. Okay. So two threads will be created on the same function and X and Y I'm passing from outside as a reference and mutex is also passed as a reference. So this function will treat them and work accordingly. So let's compile this from beginning. I have created T1 and T2 and T3. So these threads will get created and I have joined here. So they will wait. I mean, your main will wait for them to be completed. Let's suppose T1 and T2 is started and T3 also is started. T3 will try to lock M1 and M2 together because it needs M1 and M2 logged in order to access this X or Y variable, okay? And here, this M will be treated as M1 for this thread one because we are passing M1 here and catching that M here and we are locking that and it will become M2 when it will come to this thread two. Okay, I think you will be able to understand this. So with this feeling, I will go ahead and explain you this. So as I said, if this is returning, this is the return value. If it is minus one in this case, it was actually successful to lock M1 and M2. So if it was successful, then we will see that if X is not equal to zero and Y is not equal to zero, we will consume them inside X plus Y variable. See X plus Y goes into this consumed. This is our bucket, bigger bucket. This is smaller and smaller bucket you remember and after that we are emptying those buckets and i'm just simply printing this and yeah notice this i have to unlock them explicitly even though i didn't actually wrote any lock but you have to unlock because this try lock would have locked m1 and m2 then only you reached inside this if condition okay and if use count is equal to equal to zero means i have set some condition how many times I want to consume them. So if I have 
successfully consume them for five times i am happy okay and i am breaking this loop and i'll come back so we will return from here so let me just run this program okay we can just simply compile this compiled if i will run this okay see as i said i will be consuming till five and you can see that this is producing i mean incrementing plus plus means it is incrementing by one so first time x is equal to one y is equal to one and after doing that i am asking this thread to do something else means this is a very heavy duty thread it will do something here and dread doing something i have simulated for this thread as sleeping okay so it will sleep for one second means it is doing something for one second and as this one is sleeping this one will take x and y and fill its own bucket okay so this is how i have achieved this and this is why you are getting this answer x plus y becomes 2 after adding these two and then these two will go inside this then these two will go inside this and at the end after phi count you have total 10 because phi times x and phi times y become 10 so you can see that you have successfully filled your bucket so you can see that it was fairly simple program and don't worry i will be giving this program inside my blog so you can do some experiments on this okay so we'll sum this video here thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button because it motivates me to create other videos so i'll see you in the next videos and this is not my doggy okay bye bye